Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're gonna be going over the top five tech characters in MCUC. So, once again, this is just my opinion. If you have a different one, that's fine. You can write in the comments. Um, but it's just an opinion at the end of the day over a mobile game, so don't get too worked up. Um, so, right off the bat, we're just gonna go over the um, oh, sorry, the honorable mentions. So, first, we just got Darkhawk. Hulkbuster and Mysterio, some honorable mentions, but for me, they don't make it in the top five. So at number five, we got Sentinel. This guy, um, I never got to use him really, but from gameplay I've seen, he's really good because he hits pretty hard. Um, he has heal block. He has a really strong incinerate and a special two, and then of course he's a robot. So he's double immune, which is very helpful, being immune to poison and bleed, considering. Most people in the end game use suicide, so it's very helpful. Um, and overall, he's just a pretty good character. Um, the only thing that's kind of annoying with him is he um, he really kind of is hard to ramp up unless he's awakened. So you kind of do need him to be awakened, ideally, if you want to play him. Now, you don't need him awakened, but it's really painful trying to ramp him up because you basically want to ramp him up to 100 analysis charges. And you do that from like baiting out the same special and shit like that and hitting into their block and it's just a lot easier to have if he's awake and ramp him up. So yeah, that's Sentinel. There's not much to say about him. He's also really good because he's good for the variants because he's a tech character, so he's good for the tech variant. And he's also extra large, so he's good for the um like the the XL variant. So he's super good for the second and third variant. So yeah, he's just a pretty good character. Um yeah, he's also really fucking tall, which is kind of weird. It is kind of weird playing him because so much taller he is than the opponent. But you'll get used to him. So that's number five. Number four, we have another character I don't have. And I'd love to have. I just realized I have no one on this I have... N I don't have, like... I barely have anyone on this list as, like, six stars or five stars. So next we got Guillotine2099. She's number four. She... Could be number three, maybe, but I'm putting her number four just because of the, her combo shit. But basically, she's a really good character for if you run suicides. She's double immune, once again, um, because she's a robot. Um, and she has these pre-fights she can activate. Um, so let me just see what they are, this once again. Okay, so she has three of them, and... Basically, you want to end a fight with the, um, wait, am I looking at the right shit? No, yeah, whatever. Basically, she has some modes she can have, some pre-fights, and one of them is on the medium attacks. You regenerate, like, 1% of your max health, which you don't think it's a lot, but it really is when you find, and if you play well on Intercept. Every combo, you regenerate 2% health, which is very good for keeping you up and topped alive, especially for suicides. There's another one that's like every 20th hit, she cr doesn't, I mean, she crits, which is decent, I guess, but it's really not that big of a deal. And I think the third one is, I don't know what the third one is. Oh, it's the power drain also, and, and the mediums, you power drain. So that's pretty good if you're trying to play like ultra aggressive and you never want them to throw a special three. Every one of your mediums will power drain a tiny bit, so you end the combo. Push them to special three, but then when you end it with the medium, it trains a tiny bit of more power, so that's pretty cool. Um, also, she has a permanent armor up, which is very helpful. Or have X, as you know, having a permanent armor up. She also never crits, which is also very helpful for characters like Mr. Sinister and any character that punishes you for critting, so that's very helpful. But what makes this character kind of insane is, for Labyrinth at least, um, if you end the fight with a special three, she'll start the next fight with a hundred hits already on the combo meter. And the way this character works is she's kind of underwhelming until you get past a hundred hits. And once you're past a hundred hits, let's just see where, if, where it says it, because I want to know the exact amount. Um, okay. So guillotine's attack rating is... Let me just make sure my recording is still working. Okay. Guillotine's attack rate increases by 65 for each hit in our combo meter. And at a combo of 100% or 100 plus, her sword becomes empowered, dealing a burst of 87 direct energy damage for each hit above 100 
scaling with base attack and capping after 600 hits. Basically, what this means is after 100 hits, every single hit you add on the combo meter will make your hit, uh, will make the energy damage um, after each hit just more and more. So, you ever see gameplay of Guillotine at like a high combo? Nothing survives. Her damage is just so crazy. Every hit, the energy damage bonus is just crazy. And it says that it maxes out at 600 hits. But as far as I know, I don't think anyone's ever gotten to 600 hits with an max out 5 star or 6 star. Because nothing in the game has a big enough health pool for it, really. Maybe you could see an Abyss. But that's the one problem with her. Um, see, the thing is, with her damage, you need to be at 100 hits. And if you end the fight with a special 3 and you kill them with it, if they're at 5% health, It'll insta KO them um, with special three, no matter what, unless they have like damage caps. But basically, how it works is if you end the fight with a special three, then the next fight you do, you start already with 100 hits, so your damage is pretty crazy. And you can do this in every fight in Labyrinth. She's the queen of Labyrinth. Aegon's the king, obviously. Um, she can do almost every single fight. Almost, I think. She, uh, she can't do Electro, I don't believe, or maybe Juggernaut, but she can do almost every fight with relative ease, without dying really at all. With the regen, you can just keep yourself topped up. So, she's really good damage-wise, and people thought she was really good for the Abyss, but the reason why I'm only putting her at number 4 on the list is because to get this insane damage, you need to end the fight with 100 hits. I mean, with a special 3. And some fights, you can't get to the special three. Like, for example, if you throw a special three in, like, Act 6 content, okay? You kill an opponent. The next fight, you go in with 100 hits. You'll probably kill that champ before you can get to a special three yourself. So, and then once they're dead, you don't have the 100 hit combo for the next fight. So, for the fight after, you can't do it. And it's really annoying. So, for the Abyss, with the attack... Um, with the attack um thing like in the best you can only do like 200 hits before you um just die she's really gets fucked from that because she can't really finish fights she can only finish fights like if you bring Aegon in and then once they're low you can finish the fight with her but at that point if you have Aegon there's no point of doing that so she really does struggle in the abyss she's not the worst option but she's just not what we thought she was going to be for the abyss when it first was released um, since, since you can't go past 240-ish hits, um, there's, there's really no place in the game to test her damage, because Labyrinth, they die before you get even near 600 hits, so, we've never really seen her max damage, I'm pretty sure, if I'm wrong, you can correct me, but I don't think I've ever seen a max out 5-star, maybe with a 4-star, but never seen a 5-star, 6-star rank 2, or 6-star rank 3 even get close to that much, because I think the game is dead. If she, uh, okay, this is what her fix that they need to do to make her, like, beyond god tier. Make it so if she kills the opponent with a special 2 or 3, she'll keep the 100 hits. Because you can get to a special 2 in most fights, but some fights her damage are so high, you'll just barely get to a special 2 and they're dead. So you can't even have a chance to throw a special 3. So make it so if you kill them with really any special, special 1, 2, or 3. Make it so if you kill them with any special as the finishing move, then you get to keep your combo. If they did that, she'd be a lot better. She's also really good for prestige, so that's why she's at number four for me. Um, we won a war, apparently, but it's off-season, so who cares? Um, but whatever. Number three, we have... Uh, oh, my bad. Guardian. Um, people will probably argue with him or Keytain 29 for three and four, but for me, I think he's just better. Uh, I did a gameplay video on him. He's crazy. He has so much util. Um, he can parry, perfect block, non-contact hit. Um, what is it? Um, he never crits, which is good for like Mr. Sinister, obviously. Any situation you quit. He's very similar to Good Twenty Nine, actually. Neither of them quit. Or crit, sorry. And both of them have an armor buff for Havocs. But what makes this guy insane, honestly, I think a little bit better, is he's so much more utility. He has, he does need to be awakened, though. That is one thing. G2099 does not need to be awakened at all. This guy, ideally, to see his max potential, you want him to stick 200. A stick 200 as a rank 3, 6 star, he has, like, I think, 
around 9,000 energy resistance. So if you use this guy against like a magic or an Iceman and they get Limbo, Frostbite, whatever, it literally does like no damage to you. You basically heal from it. He, um, he's also with his awakened ability is, um, very immune. I don't know what the percentage is exactly, but he has a high immunity against energy, obviously, and bleed. So he heals from suicides, kind of like Corvus. Uh, his damage, I'm not gonna explain to you how it works. You can search for a video on him. It's throw a few special ones or like a special three and then a special two to finish most fights. Um, so, it, and honestly, it's kind of not really a good point, but it, he just looks cool. Um, and for me, the insane energy resistance and the fact that, um, I think, and the fact that he can't crit, has an armor up, there's so much utility. Um, it just makes him so good. So for me, and his damage, his damage is actually insane. Like you can ramp him up infinitely if you want to. It'll take a long time for a lot of special threes. I did a gameplay with him. My three star guardian, um, once I ramped him up really high, one shot Realm of Legends Wolverine with one special two. So you can build his damage insanely high. But what makes him insane, honestly, is his um, resistances and his block efficiency. So Lock Fantasy is really good, and it's really good to have him on the team because for every character except him as a 6-star, as a 4-star, I think it's every character gets 750 block efficiency more. 5-star, every character gets 1,000, and as a 6-star, every character gets 1,250, which is really good. Just for being on the team, he gives all your other characters a lot more block efficiency. So that'll help characters like Call Obsidian and shit like that. So he's just an overall really cool character, and his animations are just so good. And since he's very similar to Guilty in 2099, but just a little bit different, a little bit cooler animations, a little bit cooler utility, I had to put him above. So, sorry. Um, I think it's pretty interchangeable, but he's definitely, for me, at least close, high god tier, beyond god tier. Only problem is, you know, he needs to be a sig 200, kind of. And now number two and one, you probably guessed. I don't have number two either. But Warlock, um, triple immune, god, um, he is immune to poison, bleed, and cold snap and frostbite as a robot. Um, he has a permanent armor up, so he's immune to havocs. I just realized, Guillotine 2099, Guardian, and Warlock are all havoc immune. Uh, all the best attack characters to havoc immune. Um, special attacks cannot crit against him. And if he has the armor up, up, which isn't too helpful when you're playing him, but basically what makes this guy good is the fact that after you get 20 charges on them, you put up an infection on them, and that basically what it does, it just doesn't let them heal. It's a passive heal block, basically, permanent. So he's insane for heal and matches. Um, his heavy attack is a very strong bleed, so he actually can do do you bleed paths, which just spam heavies, which is kind of cool. Um... There's really not that much to this guy, other than the fact that he just blocks out healing, like, so well. Like, he does it better than, like, any other character, really. He also is immune to three things, and he's tech XL, so he's good for the tech variant and the um, extra large variant. He has very strong bleeds, and his passive healing can get a lot around, get a lot around a lot of like things that like you shouldn't be able to get around like selective time stream, um, what are this shit? Um, some like weird healing things that like he can get behind with his infection, like um the abyss Deadpool, the abyss Deadpool is immune to like petrifies and pretty much everything. So the only characters that can really do it are like Human Torch and Warlock. Human Torch with his reverse healing with the incinerates. And Warlock with his Infection, because it's not... No characters are mean to the Infection in the game. So he's just really good, honestly. He's just a big dude who's really good. And that's pretty much it. It's not that it's not my, that much to this guy, but he's just so good. He's like a util powerhouse. He's immune to Havocs. Immune to Regeneration, basically. can counter it. Um, really decent damage, honestly. Um, good for the variants. Um, what else does he have? I don't know. He, he's just a good character. <laughs> Not much really to him, but he's really good. And he's the second best. And the first character, as you all guessed, if you've played this game for more than 10 minutes, 
Ghost, I mean, I have her as a max at five star and six star rank two. She's that good. Um, she's basically immune to every single debuff in the game and turns it or immune to every damage over time debuff in the game and turns it into a fury. Um, she can guarantee crit, can fully counter evade, um, can tank special threes with the synergies. Um, she's just overall insane. Um, can create her own openings with phasing, never has to parry, never has to take a single point of damage if you play her well. She's just very good. There's not much, there's not really that much to her. Also, she's very basic, but the few things she does have just weave so well together that just makes her the best character in the game, basically. Other than, like, Quape. You can get your own openings. Um, intercept pretty easily with not much brain power involved. Um, immune to every single damage over time debuff in the game. Um, cannot take damage while phasing with the hood synergy. So she can tank special threes. And her special twos do crazy damage. Her damage output overall is insane. She's just so good. Not much to say here, really. The, la the Warlock and Ghost... The best two tech characters, there's really not that much to say about them. They have a few things, and the few things they have, they do extremely well and better than anyone else, which makes them the best characters for their class. And for Ghost, arguably the best character in the game. I mean, it helps a lot to be immune to every debuff in the game and turn it to crazy strength. Also, when she's awakened, um, while getting attacked, while phasing, she gains power, so she can gain a lot of power really quickly, which is very helpful for, like... An example, the Mordo boss in Act 6.2, um, he has the nodes, I forget they're called, Special Delivery is one of them, which is you know, every 15 hits you have to throw a special, and also another one that's, I forget what it's called, but you can't throw the same special twice, you die. So most characters can get to a special one within the 15 hits and be fine, but they can't get to a different special in another 15 hits, they just don't have enough power for that. So they die, but Ghost, you just phase and then you attack and then you phase so you're gaining power from that so she can get to two different specials in 15 hands so that's just one example um there's also a lot of other examples i can think of in x7 there's a lot of x7 node combinations i remember that her power gain was very helpful for so she's just an overall beast dude i mean her damage is so fucking maximum you put a tech power boost in her and it's basically just bullying honestly like just special two cycles she's like the perfect suicide character because also with the hood synergy, if you phase right after a special too, you don't take recoil damage because you're phasing. So she doesn't take recoil damage. And while she's awakened, she starts the fight phasing. So you never take the bleed of poison damage. You just start the fight with two furies. She's just perfect, dude. Honestly, Ghost the best character in the game. If you don't have her, sucks to suck. Uh, I'd advise getting her. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.